But the one timeline will consist of all of those who have become all hung up into the material world and all into the games and the politics and the religion and all that kind of stuff that the material world has created up to now. And those of us who basically are on the ascension path and basically have already transited through, to some degree, the fourth dimension, and even others who have already arrived at the fifth dimension. Because Mother Earth, basically Gaia, okay, the living goddess who is the mother of all Earth and all created beings on the plane of Earth's existence, uh, has said basically that she's tired of this. She's tired of, of this race of men who are polluting her world and paving over her nature spots and doing away with her forests and polluting her waters and all of this. And she's just saying, well, I'm sorry, but I'm tired of this and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. So now I'm going to raise my vibration and I shall create a world basically similar, excuse me, similar to the Garden of Eden in, in regards to those of you who follow the Bible, but basically a, a, a paradise recreated so that all of those who reside in the dimension will once again experience the true love and complete evolvement in regards to feeling that love directly from source, which of course, again, we allow ourselves to become overlaid and basically distracted to a large extent so we don't give that much attention to our inner selves, which is basically our true selves. And then, of course, you know, uh, again, the metaphysical language has changed courses three times during my lifetime, excuse me. And during this outlay of information, you're actually restating the same facts and the same topics, only the names for the same have drastically changed. For example, all right, there's a large inter interplay between the word soul and spirit, all right? And I would go as far to say as this is a correction that needs to be distinguished and needs to be made, okay? The soul is nothing more than the personality of your spirit, just as your ego is the personality of your human self, okay? So that clarifies that once and for all. Your soul, when you refer to your soul, you're referring to the personality of your higher self, or basically the, the personality of your spirit. Your spirit, in essence, is nothing but pure vibrational energy that consists of nothing but pure consciousness. Because why? When you were created, you were created as a divine being, okay, directly from the source of all. Now, of course, all of you are going to have different names, different traditions, different so on and so forth, which is fantastic, okay? I acknowledge all of those as a theologian, having studied all the traditions and all the religions of the world. All right, and all have an equal place, and no one is right and no one is wrong. There, that puts us all on the same foothold or the same chessboard, you could say, in a matter of speaking. Okay, so your reality, of course, is up to you, and what you do with that reality is also up to you. But you also need to keep in mind that words are very powerful, and thoughts are even more powerful. Okay, and when you add words and thoughts and in emotional intentions all together then you come upon the science of magic. So anyway, all this said, these two timelines are basically have completely separated about now. And all of those that are on the ascension path will soon be basically disappearing in a manner of speaking because your vibrational rate will be at such an ascended vibration that those that remain in the third dimension will no longer be able to see you. All right? Now to give you some to give you a relevation point, all right, when we speak of the other side or heaven or whatever you want to call it, okay, where all spirits go, first and foremost, you should understand that no one is ever truly away from us, okay? The crossed over point, or what we call the uh, point of heaven or the point of the other side, is only rationally about four feet above yourself when you actually are physically standing up. The reason that you cannot see it, hear it, or identify with it is because it vibrates in the seventh dimension. So therefore, its vibrational rate is far outside your normal kin as far as understanding, inter interacting, and so on and so forth. That is not to say that you cannot do so because everyone is capable of everything. You see, the only thing that ever holds us back from anything is ourselves. We love to get in our own ways constantly and get distracted with all kinds of things that have no relevance really to our spirituality. But at the same time, it is interesting, so we play along with it. All right? So there's no longer any, any time to be sitting on the fence in between the two dimensions, 
Rather, you must get down off the fence and decide for yourself whether you're going to continue on the timeline, which is the third dimensional or three dimensional world of the black and white and good and evil and all this kind of stuff. Or if, in fact, you're going to ascend and transit through the fourth dimension, which will assist you in creating your diamond body. Okay. Of course, in order to establish your diamond body, you have to go through a great matrix of all kinds of essential alignments and all this kind of stuff. But it doesn't necessarily take a whole long time. Okay. And it's all a peaceful resonance. All right. So it's nothing you have to be frightened of or nothing you have to think that would you've got to be taken up on a ship to have be transported into another dimension. That's not true at all. Because in order to have the experience of another dimension, all you have to do is raise your vibration. Now, vibrations, again, are raised very readily and very easily because, you see, the highest vibration in all of creation is love. But it's not the love that we consider here on Earth. It's an unconditional love that is manifested through the source of all, which is, of course, the divine will and the creators who created all of creation. And I look upon it as mother and father God. But, of course, that's my personal interpretation because it makes good sense to me. Why? Because there are men and there are women. So why wouldn't you want to make a man in the image of God and a woman in the image of goddess, you see? And again, here we have equilateralness, all right? There is an absolute, complete, supreme equality between the two. And if the truth be known, God himself is rather kind of lazy, okay? In other words, he went through the, the triumph of making the whole of creation, which he keeps adding to here and there and withdrawing from every now and again. But he basically gave the majority storehouse of his power over to the goddess. Why? Because the goddess is even more creative than he is. She is where we find imagination, intuition, telepathy, the arts, okay, and all of this kind of stuff. And basically, she also is where we find compassion, okay, and kindness and consideration. And this is, you know, I mean, you know, if you talk religion, of course, you're talking Mother Mary, the mother of God, who begat the son Jesus, who was basically a human being until the age of 33, at which time he became God actualized. So anyway, and I'm not going to go on into religion because, yes, it plays a part in metaphysics simply because there is a mystery side to religion, just like anything else. We have an outer school and an inner school, and the outer school is practiced by those who are the followers, and the inner school are practiced by the priests and so forth who have been initiated into the facets of their tradition. So anyway, just as I am a Coptic bishop, I was also introduced inner side of the Egyptian tradition, okay? Not the outer side, the inner side, all right? And the, and the priests within our lineage, of course, have upheld those traditions for thousands of years. But they won't talk to you about it, of course not, because on the surface, to the regular mind and heart of man, they want to be perceived as good Christians. And indeed they are, even though they do address the apocryphal texts which have been deliberately left out of the Bible. So anyway, before getting off into that tangent, the two timelines again, okay, one is 3D and one is 5D. And you have to make a choice what your immediate future is going to become. Are you going to remain here in 3D or are you going to transit in your ascension process and vibration and frequency-wise into the fifth dimension? And if you do so, like I said, eventually, who knows? I can't tell you how far in the future we're talking. We may be talking a couple of months. We may be talking a couple of years. We may be talking a couple of hundred years. Because in addition to all of this taking place, all right, we are at the end of a Kali Yuga, which the uh, the Tantric in the Middle East and so forth, um, and also Indian and various aspects, because I, I recognize Hinduism as, as a very valuable tradition. I also re- recognize Tibetan uh, mystery, uh, or rather Tibetan wisdom as a very valid school of interest. And I also recognize... Uh, the Buddhist philosophers and, you know, uh, all of that such. As well, of course, it's the Bhagavad Gita and that, that story that was the interplay of creation between Siva and uh, Vishnu and all of them peoples. And, I mean, I'm not downplaying or saying that anyone, again, is any more larger or less than any of the, any of the ones I have spoken of. Rather, they are all individual paths. But the interesting thing is, of the thousands of paths that are created by man, They all lead to the same place, and that's back to the creator of all, because that's where our home is, that's where we came from, and that's to where we all shall return. So if you choose to be in the fifth dimension, then, of course, 
your expansion of awareness and your vibration and frequency would go upgrade, okay? And eventually, yes, um, once you transit past the fifth dimension, you will certainly not be able to be seen or heard any longer by those in 3D. So if you were to cl- clarify this or parallel this, uh, the Bible refers in the book of John, basically, the rapture, okay, where basically people will come outside one day and good friends and persons they knew for a long time will no longer be seen, and it's as though they have just suddenly disappeared, okay? And this is, this is something that's foretold, and more than likely it would transpire, simply because you have millions, if not billions of people who believe in all of this coming to fruition. So you have to remember, all right, that you yourself as an individual are a co-creator of your world, and even to some extent, the branches of where your world intermixes with the outward universe. And so as a conscious co-creator, you create your world and all that transpires therein. As a conscious co-creator on a mass race level, okay, you participate in the overall consciousness of mankind. And the overall consciousness of mankind is basically the trendiness of where mankind themselves see themselves as evolving whether it be spiritually, whether it be awareness-wise, whether it be technology-wise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to determine for yourself what dimension your world is going to resonate in. And then in turn, if you do so and say, for example, that you, cho- you chose to go to 5D, well, then you're going to meet with all kinds of like-minded people that are there existing already in 5D. Now, that doesn't mean that you just really, truly, physically disappear No, it means that your physical self is actually transposed, transported, and vibrationally recreated or created in sonics into the fifth dimension. And basically, you no longer have a use for a three-dimensional body because that three-dimensional body has been basically um, raised in its vibration and frequency so that in turn, through the ascension process, the whole ascension process is nothing more than assuming the responsibility of becoming more and more of yourself, you see. There's no great mystery to it. No, it's just meaning that you latch on to the fact that you want truth. And when you want truth and you become a seeker of the truth, then basically you become more and more aware of who you are individually, such as where you came from, who you were before you arrived here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, Like I said, you have to make a choice because basically this is the divine will of the creator of all, that basically mankind has gotten to this place three times previously at the end of 100,000 years, all right? And in the previous three times, basically speaking, mankind has evaporated himself as a race. So now we sit at the fourth and final time of this juncture. And so basically it's divine will saying, okay, are you going to join me in love in the fifth dimension? Are you going to hold back and stay asleep in the third dimension? Because you see, the creator doesn't mind which way you go because we we each have individual free will and our free will designates for us where we arrive. Well, I remind you, thoughts, words, intentions, and emotions are very powerful things. Is there a way to put the key to the general theory of relativity with space-time because... General relativity and people understand third to fifth, but they jump over fourth when, and that just is hard for people to understand consciousness when a single fourth dimensional space time diagram is used with Albert Einstein working on special relativity. But the speed of light in a vacuum for observers, you know, but the motion of the light source, how do we explain to them, you know, jumping into string theory? 10th through 13th are the, we'll say, just for the sake of argument and math, that there's only 10 dimensions. Uh, you know, we, we know we can do 12, 16, whatever, but we'll say for right now, in uh, space time, we have the mathematical model of, you know, we have depth with space, but they say time in physics. So, okay. yeah, I've always okay. had a let's, little let's, confusion let's, let's, let's with back three up a dimensions. Minute. Okay, let's, let's back up a minute, all right? You cannot Uh use three-dimensional science or math to describe a dimension that is beyond that existence. Simply because the fourth fourth dimension... dimension. No, 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 no. Time is the creation of man, all right? When you leave the third-dimensional world, 
basically you become aware of time and existence as a circle, all right? 